Many years ago, Ben Franklin once wrote a letter, and he started that letter by apologizing for the length of the letter. And he simply stated that he just didn't have enough time to write a shorter letter. So today, let me apologize to you, because this would have been a much shorter presentation if I had a little bit more time to prepare. But the whole point of it is really simple thoughts take a lot of work and effort to prepare. And that is the theme of my discussion here today. As I started preparing for the discussion, I started to look at topics on the topic of uh, simplicity, and I found a lot written on complexity. And then I started to think, well, of course, people write about complexity, but com complexity is hard, and it makes you look smart if you're writing about complexity. Simplicity, I guess, is perhaps the opposite of complexity, so it must be easy. So not many people are talking about easy things, I guess. But I think I'll tell you a little bit today that suggests that it is really hard to get to easy things. So we see simplicity in many different forms. We see it in nature, we see it in art, we see it in science, and we see it in narrative and in prose. But don't let that fool you. It took a lifetime of accomplishment for Albert Einstein to simplify the theory of relativity into three different variables that you see there. It takes incredible level of complexity for a flower to grow, to have the right soil, to have the right irrigation, to have the right pollination. It takes an artist years to create a true work of art. Perhaps one of the most simple things that we all own today is the iPhone, but think about it. We keep talking about this as a phone, but it's not a phone. It's a computer, but it's really not a computer. It's a GPS device. Well, actually, it's a recording device. It's just about everything, and quite frankly, a child can use it without any training and without any sort of instruction. That is true simplicity, but it's simplicity in the eyes of the beholder, not necessarily the eyes of the producer. Now, on the other hand, how many of you own a few remotes at home? <laughs> this about accounts for my uh, media station here. And the interesting thing is, you know, we have all these kinds of remotes, but every time I walk into someone's home, what do I see? I see that 12 o'clock flashing on the screen because nobody knows how to fix the clock on the screen. <laughs> With all of those buttons, you think they'd figure it out. Now, let's go to narrative for a second. Perhaps one of the most memorable speeches ever given was the Gettysburg Address. 278 words in total. We all remember it, four score and seven years ago, on and on. Now, not too long ago, the President of the United States gave the State of the Union Address. <laughs> it was a couple of hours. And uh, Supreme Court Justice Ginsburg there, I'm not exactly sure if she's sleeping or praying for the end of that. <laughs> so simplicity, again, the iPhone, and in narrative, for instance, I myself was not a believer in Twitter. I could not, as an engineer, I can't imagine that 140 characters would provide you enough value to be able to truly communicate. But I was wrong, absolutely wrong. It has gone viral, and my kids communicate with me all the time on Twitter. <laughs> And boy, it is powerful. <laughs> but let me tell you, we're trained to make things much more complex than they need to be. So how many of you in sixth grade had to read a book, Red Badge of Courage, or whatever the case may be? Well, what would they tell you? They tell you, give me a book report. And the key parameter was it had to be 10 pages. Well, what if you could tell the whole story in three pages? No, 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 it's 10 pages. They ask you to make it perhaps much more complicated than it needs to be. I'm an electrical engineer. So, you know, I was trained to be very accurate, very precise about things. My very first job, I was asked to design some amplifiers. And I spent weeks designing these amplifiers. And, you know, in school they teach you to get down to the fifth significant uh, decimal point. And, and I did that. And my supervisor came to me and basically told me, you know, in school I bet you you would have gotten an A for this but you get an F here. And he brings me to a bin and he shows me these are the parts that you have to work with. The parts that you've designed with here would 
cost this device hundreds of thousands of dollars to build, and our price point's $10. So that precision was overvalued, quite frankly, in the real world. So I will also tell you, complexity is very, very costly. So many of you have probably completed your tax forms recently. Now, to complete those, realize there are 75,000 pages written in the tax code. Now, if you think about it, that growth has been significant over the years, and more citizens complain about this. 64% of the citizens complain about this. What's really interesting about it is, what about those 36% of the citizens? <laughs> they really like this? <laughs> Well, you know, there's a business that's around this right now. If you look at it right now, most filers depend on someone else to help them. That business costs $193 billion a year, $640 per citizen, just to complete your tax returns. And in the end, what does it provide? Well, in 2001, the tax gap, which is the amount of money that the government is expected to collect versus the amount of money that they actually collect, was $311 billion. In 2006, it had grown to $450 billion. So perhaps the more pages we add, the more complexity in, uh, we add and the more costly it gets. Now, I would argue the converse of this. If we created a new form, like the wicked easy form here, we might be able to get off saving $640 billion. Now, I work a lot with the Defense Department and so forth, and when the Defense Department acquires something, they do have a lot of rules and procedures. This is, in fact, this is, this is real, and any of you who work with the Department, this is the process by which you acquire something. This is why things cost an awful lot of money. This process yields typically a 48% uh, increase in cost in what was projected, as well as 30 months average schedule slip. Things are improving, that's for sure. Now, I will also tell you that uh, there's been some effort to try to simplify this. And a lot of people sometimes relate complexity and simplicity with size. So the DOD spent quite a bit of money and actually simplified this and put it on a 4 by 6 car. Uh, <laughs> didn't work. Simplicity is profitable. If complexly, complexity is costly, simplicity is profitable. How many of you have been to Ikea? Probably many of you, right? So you could put an entire bedroom set in the trunk of a car. Because if you go to, to Ikea, what you find is they've modularized everything. Everything comes with the same screws. Everything comes nicely packaged. And you could assemble an entire room in the same way, very, very simply. And IKEA has been very, very profitable in being able to do this. Other organizations, like Costco, many of you, I'm sure, have been to Costco. Costco manages on, on the order of about 4,000 distinct products in any store. A supermarket manages on the order of 40 to 80,000 distinct products in a store. By virtue of simplifying what they have to offer, they're able to give you a much more valuable deal in the way you purchase these things, and they are very profitable in doing that. Now, I share this one, because this is actually a square in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. What's interesting about this, simplicity doesn't mean no rules. No rules leads to chaos, and, and that's exactly what you have there. For, for any of you who've ever been to Boston and tried to go into the Callahan <laughs> Tunnel, that's pretty much akin to the Callahan Tunnel before the big dig occurred. Now, being an engineer, I have to put a little math behind this, and the math is the power law. You could look it all up, but I'll, let me give you a little tutorial on the power law. The power law is all about a few things gives you access to many things. And it's those few things that become especially powerful. If you think about it, today there are billions of websites on the internet. But most of you probably only access a few. Google will get you to any one of those websites. You want to buy something? You go to Amazon. They'll get you to a lot of different websites. You want to connect with someone? You go to Facebook. These are called loose couplers. 
These are, in fact, those few things within the power law that allow you to connect to many things. We did a lot of work inside my organization where, in fact, the, the military was trying to connect many different systems together. And in an effort to do that, there were many different variations. In fact, we started to take a look at the scheme that they put together, and there were 10 to the 18th different variations in the way systems can talk together. What we found out was 85% of what they were trying to do was really just simply to tell the other person where they were, when they were there, and who they were. So we were able to reduce all of that complexity by focusing on those three elements, and we were able to connect thousands of systems that before were not able to talk to each other. All of us know the bell curve. We were probably graded on the bell curve at some point in time. The power law distribution is very different. If you look at the power law distribution, it's about a few things that have enormous capability. If you could simplify to those few things, you have incredible power in that power law. Some of you may have read a book called Six Degrees of Freedom. In, in fact, Kevin Bacon was identified as the person in Hollywood that knew everybody six degrees removed. In fact, I know Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, I had the privilege to be at the uh, Sons of Italy National Education and Leadership um, Awards uh, dinner, and Joe Montagna spoke there. Joe and I shook hands, so I now know Kevin Bacon. <laughs> simplicity is in the eyes of the beholder. As I mentioned, it's not easy to get to simplicity. Someone is taking the complexity out of things to get to simplicity. The fact of the matter is, this was a computer that, that we, our organization, worked on now 50 years ago. It was called the Whirlwind Computer, the first real-time digital computer. Over those years, we've been very successful in miniaturizing that capability. And about three years ago, we published and actually built with Harvard University the very first nanoscale computer. And you see that computer. Uh, in fact, what you see there is all the connectors to the computer. You would not see the actual elements of that computer there. The key point here is there's a lot of complexity that goes behind making something look very, very simple. If you don't get it right, you get a population that just gets angry at you. If, if I, I, had, I was CIO at one point in time in the organization, and when I was the CIO in the organization, I had a bunch of folks working on something, and they worked on it so that the workflow in the back office was great, but it caused everybody in the company to do more work to save some effort on two or three people. So we had to turn that around. What we had to do was reduce the amount of work that the 7,000 people had to do and impose a little bit more work on the two to three people. That's the power law. So if this at all inspires you, there is a book written on simplicity. John Maida from the MIT uh, Media Lab has written this book. I, I urge you to, actually he's done a TED talk. Now, the difference between John and myself is I would have had five laws of simplicity. I think he made it harder than it should be. So let me just give you a call to action. If you're inspired by this at all, take the time, look at the world around you, and simplify something. Thank you very much. <laughs>